I told you last week, we had a group of documents come out. The FBI was helping Hillary Clinton just before the election, giving her a special heads up on documents. And you know, it's so outrageous because the documents show Hillary Clinton uh, wanted her FBI 302 report, which is a narrative report of her sham interview uh, before the election. And so the FBI general counsel helped Hillary's lawyer file the appropriate paperwork on Hillary Clinton's behalf. And sure enough, it was released within weeks. And in there, they say, we'll give him, yeah, sure, we can give her a heads up before it's put up on the FBI website. And I thought that never happens for Judicial Watch. I've never talked, none of our lawyers ever talked to the general counsel for the FBI. They don't help us on our FOIAs, and Lord knows they don't give us heads up on documents that are released before they're released. And these documents specifically that, that, again, they just put up without telling us first, but I guess if we're Hillary, we get special political treatment. Show notes about a meeting with Intelligence Community Inspector General about Clinton emails were missing. And a CD containing the notes is likely damaged irreparably. Irreparably, isn't that convenient? And these documents were put up on the FBI's website. Actually, there's new documents going up there today they didn't give us a heads up on. as a result of a FOIA lawsuit by Judicial Watch. So we asked for the documents Hillary Clinton was asking for, but we had to get a lawsuit to get them all, right? So this is the FBI investigative file, more or less, of the Clinton email sham investigation, or sham email investigation. On number four, on or about February 4th, 2016, special agents, names redacted, attempted to locate redacted, describes as notes for meeting acquired by redacted. They looked through all the case materials. However, they were not able to locate this item. So they consider it missing. And what is it? It's notes of a meeting between the special, uh, the inspector general for the intelligence community and the FBI team. Why is it important that those notes be uncovered and disclosed? Because I believe, and I'm speculating here, so take this as an educated guess, that the notes reference a discussion and a warning given by the IG of the, inspect of the intelligence community to Peter Strzok, who was running the investigation effectively for the FBI at the time, that the Clinton's email system, namely Hillary Clinton's email server, had likely been hacked in some way by the Chinese in a way that allowed them to get a copy of all the emails that were being sent and received. The timing is uh, according to Louis Gohmert, about the same time, because he says the meeting took place in 2015. And sure enough, uh, the meeting that we're referencing here was in August of 2015. And Gohmert exposed that the investigator advised Strzok of an anomaly on Hillary Clinton's emails going through the private server. The forensic analysis found that all those emails except four, over 30,000, were going to an address that was not on the distribution list. It was later reported that it was a Chinese state-owned company that hacked Clinton's email server. The ICIG referred the Clinton email investigation to the FBI on July 6, 2015, just after a, under, under a month before the meeting for which the notes were lost. So this is to think about like this. You have this agency refer to the FBI an investigation targeting the presumed nominee for the Democratic Party for president. They have a big meeting within a month and they lose the notes for those meetings, for that meeting. And this is on top Oh, this is where I got distracted. So I talked about the FBI helping Hillary Clinton, right? On top of that, the, the, those same groups of documents show the FBI 
didn't bother creating 302 reports, interview reports of four witnesses. Those are missing. So we have four witness interview reports missing, and now the notes of a key meeting between the FBI and the intelligence community about Hillary Clinton's email server. What, draw, what conclusions do you draw from that? Well, you can draw two conclusions. One conclusion is that there's a cover-up in the sense they don't want us to see the documents, they didn't like what they heard at the meetings, they didn't like what the witnesses said, so they don't want that information to see the light of day. The other conclusion is equally corrupt is that the investigation was a joke. And when something's a joke, you don't bother following the rules. You don't care about the notes. You don't care about recording interviews the way you're supposed to. You allow Hillary Clinton to do whatever she wants. Bill Clinton can meet with the Attorney General of the United States, a putative witness and maybe target. James Comey can run the investigation out of his back pocket because it's all a sham. It's not a real investigation, it's political. Draw whatever conclusion you want. Now, you may think it's an innocent explanation. Oh, I guess you can draw that conclusion as well, but I think that would be naive, and it's certainly inconsistent with all the other information out there. Again, this is Judicial Watch uncovering more concerning behavior by the Comey FBI, and I put that nicely, don't I, about the Clinton email scandal. And it's not just FOIA lawsuits. I will remind you that Judicial Watch is doing the heavy lifting right now in federal court with discovery. We're taking witness testimony on the Clinton email issue thanks to a ruling by a federal court judge who wants to know the following, whether Hillary Clinton's email system was set up to, ev to evade and avoid FOIA, whether his court was hoodwinked, whether they wanted to shut down our case so they could get away with hiding the Clinton emails, and whether there are other Clinton emails out there that need to be found. And so we've been deposing witness after witness, one of which recently testified, the top security official at the FBI, that Hillary Clinton was warned twice on her Clinton emails, excuse me, on the, her BlackBerry use and her personal email use, the security consequences of doing that, the security risk. And obviously she ignored the risk. I tell you what, if you're warned not to do something and you do it anyway, hmm, how does that fit in with someone later just saying that you had no intent to break the rules? Obviously, it doesn't fit in well, does it? But that was James Comey's corrupt collusion and cover-up for Hillary Clinton. She had no intent, as if, that, as, if even, as if even the law required that. It didn't. So we're in the middle of it. You know, and, and, and I want to remind you of this. There's no Russia gate without Clinton email gate. One was designed to provide cover for the other. They didn't want Hillary Clinton ever to be prosecuted. How could they? They were working with her to target her political opponent. So that wasn't going to work. But then they had the danger of the Justice Department being run by someone else other than a Clinton operative because she lost the election. So what did they do? They doubled down on this Russiagate hoax and effectively froze the Justice Department from doing anything else other than Russia and protecting Hillary for the last two years. I hope things have been broken at Justice, or at least that log jam, that, that things are unfrozen as a result of the, Mueller, the collapse of the Mueller investigation. It didn't end, it collapsed. We'll see, but it doesn't matter because we're going to do the work anyway. Justice Department doesn't do it. You know, it's more of the same, but we're getting accountability the best way we're able to for you, the American people, in the meantime.